Let's spend a couple minutes talking about how we measure a radius. In order to do that, I'm going to jump into the screen. And I've got a circle pulled up. And we're going to go kind of back to the basics of geometry and talk for uh, a minute about the relationship between a diameter and a radius of a circle. I'm going to come into the label and I'm going to use point mode. And we're going to find the diameter, meaning the distance across a circle. This is a 10 inch circle. Okay. Now, I'm still going to measure, but I'm going to move my offset to zero. Uh, now we're going to measure from the edge to the center. If 10 inches is from one edge all the way to the opposite widest edge, from the center to the edge would be exactly half. And that's what we see is a 5 inch radius when we have a 10 inch diameter. Another way to look at that would be if I go into draw, circle. I'm going to draw a red circle and we can make this a uh, 5 inch radius and we'll see over here that updates to 10 inches here and vice versa, right? Uh, if I make this 6, okay, we see the radius updates to 3. I'm going to turn snapping off, that way this floats around and we can see that circle is just a little bit smaller. Uh, there. Elsewhere on our screen, I've got two lines that make a corner. If a customer asks you to draw a three inch radius, I want to show you another way to look at that and think about it uh, so you can visualize this as you're working and checking your measurements. We'll go into offset. I'm offsetting three inches. So we'll get uh, a dashed line that's three inches away from that blue line. And then when I come into fillet and radius, again, we're going to do a three inch radius. I pick one line, then the other. And you can see it's exactly at three inches that that straight edge starts that curve. Okay. Now, let's draw a circle. Draw circle. This time I'll turn my snapping on because I want this to land directly on top of that radius we drew. And so we see the center of the circle lines up with that radius corner. I'd like to show you another tool that should be in the lid of your kit. All right, if you reach into the foam, most of the laser cases have some goodies up here. And one of my favorite things to use when measuring a radius is this radius gauge. It's going to be really hard to see on camera, but each rounded corner they've printed in or scored in the measurement for how round that corner is. This is a great tool to line up to a sink to see how round is that corner or to discuss with a customer if they want a rounded corner somewhere, let's say on their island, right? You can say, Hey man, this is what a one inch radius looks like. This is a three inch. What would you like? Now, I've lost a number of these on job sites because it's transparent. It just sort of disappears into many cabinet drawers. I recommend uh, writing your phone number on, on one of these pages. So those are some tips and tricks and how to think about measuring a radius. Thank you. Let's dig a little deeper into a radius. We've got two line segments, each 15 inches long. If I have a customer that requests that I make a radius that's 16 inches, I want you to see what would happen. We'll type in 16, pick the first line and the second line, and we get an error message. What does this error message really mean? It means the lines are not as long as they need to be for that radius to exist. To visualize this in a new way, we're going to draw a circle. I've got a 16 inch radius circle and I've got a little spot hidden in here, a little snap point hidden. We can drop that in just so. And if we zoom in really carefully, we would see the furthest point of that circle does not meet the length of the line. So this is why we can't do a 16 inch radius on a 15 inch long line. Let's zoom out and try something a little different and we'll see this in action and how it'll work. 
Again, we will go to draw circle. This time we'll do a 12 inch radius circle and we'll make it green just to make a little visual distinction there. And this time we'll just go snap that green circle on here. And if I zoom in and zoom in some more, we'll see that this circle just barely intersects with that line. So if we do a radius, that radius would begin right here and begin that curve. All right, so zoom out a little bit. So let's zoom into this green circle. And at the very top of this circle, it should just meet the blue line. In geometry, this is what we would define as the tangent of this circle. And we could really get in deep into what it means to define a tangent and all the complex geometry. But for us at LPI, when we're talking about templating, we're typically just going to mean this is the edge of a radius where it transitions into the next geometry, right? So to further illustrate this, let's erase the red circle that doesn't meet. And now we'll go fillet, radius. We want a 12 inch radius. We pick one line, we pick the other line, and we see now it follows perfectly. And you can see that tangent point where the circle becomes that blue radius. So let's look at a couple other examples. Here's some red lines. I have a straight line that meets this radius, those points where it meets, that is by LPI's definition, the radius tangent, okay? And we can see over here, two curves going in different directions. You'll often see this when you're working with those 60-40 sinks where you have one bowl that transitions to that uh, larger bowl. And you'll get two curves going in different directions. In order to get that to come out nice and clean and perfect on your CNC machine, you need that tangent point to be in the right place. So let's go to view and we'll turn on snap points. So we can see exactly where our lines transition into the radius. That is our tangent, right? We have the center of the arc or the radius here and the tangent here and here. On this shape, kind of this S shape, we have a tangent, a center, a tangent. This point is shared by the radius on each side, the center and the next tangent. The tangent would be where our radius meets the adjacent geometry, the geometry that it connects to. So with this information, we think you're gonna have a lot of success using radius, using fillet in your drawings.